Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Janice Bernard. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, The Gum, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or if you guys want to get everything that Janice has to offer, listen, do yourself a favor. Go to Amazon and Barnes & Noble to purchase the book, but go directly to her personal website, JaniceBernard.com. There, not only will you be able to find more information on the gum, but you'll be able to find more information on Janice herself. So one last time, go directly to her personal website to get everything that she has to offer, JaniceBernard.com. And I will say, Janice was brought to People of Distinction today by some of the best movers in the business. Parchment Global Publishing. If you have a book that you'd like moved, well, move it through Parchment. You can find them at parchmentglobalpublishing.com. And guys, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Janice here on the line with us because her book we're going to be discussing today, The Gum, listen, it's a children's book, okay? But it's a fun educational ride. So listen, she is going to be the expert on the topic. She's going to be able to articulate all the nuances of the book much better than I ever could. So without further ado, let's bring her here on the line with us. Janice, first and foremost, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? Well, I'm feeling really very well, and thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate that very, very much. Absolutely. Well, listen, we are just as as excited to have you on here, and we appreciate you being a guest with us here on People of Distinction. So let's jump right in, Janice. Before we get into the book, let's hold off slightly. Let's build that temptation just a little bit more, okay? Tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a teacher of English uh, for over 40 years, and I have done uh, drama and some uh, what, what uh, um, commercials, community theater, and uh, I did uh, shows on TV. And let's see, what else did I do? I do speaking and different things that I uh, have been doing for dr- uh, dramatically uh, for years. <laughs> Fantastic. Even though I don't sound like it now because I have to keep thinking of what other things I did. <laughs> That is wonderful. A fellow thespian. I love it. I love it. You know, Janice, first and foremost, thank you for sharing. Listen, such a large background in education, right? And I am not a teacher uh, by trade. I I spent four years teaching. I I taught three years in college and I taught fourth graders for one year. And my significant other, she's a teacher now. She's been teaching for, you know, almost 15 years. And let me be the first to tell you here on our show Listen, thank you so much for the work that you've been able to put forth and, you know, the dedication to shaping young minds, because I I can attest it it is not an easy job and teachers don't get nearly enough recognition for the amount of work that they have to do as they should. So thank you very much for all that you've been able to do. You know, we, we love that here on People of Distinction. Well, it also makes you feel really well when you run into a student or two or many of them who congratulate you for helping them along the road and for what they've helped to become. And it makes you feel so very, very good. Absolutely. I believe it. I absolutely believe it. Janice, listen, let's not wait any longer, okay? The Gum. Uh Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, The Gum is a story that takes place in 1938, and it takes the people back uh, at that time so they have a glimpse into what it was like when there was no electricity, they had no running water except one faucet on the back porch, mm-hmm. and uh, the cistern was there to catch the water from the rain, and the family lived very happily, doing all the chores they had to do, basically, uh, as people had to do all of their lives before all of the 
electronic and wonderful internet things have appeared. <laughs> but anyway, it's a story uh, of fun, I hope, where uh, the gum, which is the title of the book, of course, gets uh, dropped on the street somewhere. And of course, uh, the gum is sticky and uh, it's gooey and it gets a journey uh, through many, many adventures from one place to another, and it aggravates different people in different ways and continues on until, and I don't want to tell you too many things about how it's going to end, but (laughs) uh, (laughs) it makes you feel like, oh, my dear, where is that gum going to show up again and cause aggravation and then they have a solution and there's more aggravation and then it all ends sort of happily ever after (laughs) absolutely there you go well listen thank you for not giving too much away because listen guys you know what you got to (laughs) do you want to figure out the 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 book you want to learn about everything that happens there's there's no escaping it you got to go to amazon you got to go to barnes and noble pick up your copy (laughs) of the gum now, Janice, you know, one question that I, I'm really curious about in hearing your brief synopsis, you know, you specifically put it in like a very specific year, 1938. Why was uh-huh. why did you decide to write your book in that particular time period? Well, I lived in that time period. <laughs> 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 because the facts in that book about all of the things and the way they had to live and the way they got their food and the way they cooled it off with the Iceman, uh, it's true. <laughs> it's, a learning, it's a learning process for the children or anybody who wants to read it, actually, uh, in history and what was going on in the lives of the people who lived without all of the accoutrements we have today (laughs) with uh, happiness and joy and sharing things with each other, even though there was a little aggravation with the gum. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. You know, such a great point to bring up. And listen, you know, of course, it's it's a time period that, as you stated, you'd lived through, right? So it's something that you are well equipped and and, and understand through your own experience. But I love the underlying message that, you know, you just kind of pointed to, listen, we didn't always have all of this technology and all of the busyness that we have going on in today's time. Right. I mean, it was a simpler time, but in so many ways, a much more beneficial time because the human connection, you know, I'm sure was much, much more valued at that point. And nowadays, listen, technology, for all the benefits that it has given to our society, it comes with some detriments as well. And and I love the fact that you brought that up. And really, again, an educational, fun ride to share with the kids. And that's fantastic. Now, Janice, next question. Let's get into inspiration, okay? Now, Of course, as you know, inspiration can take many forms, right? It's a multi-part question. So A, what inspired this book? And of course, I think we've already started to go into why that particular time period was appealing to you. But what inspired you to actually write this book? And then B, listen, you come from, as you stated, a background full of education through teaching and also being a, a thespian and you're an actress and a lot of work that you've done in drama and theater and television and film. Why did you then make the switch to becoming a writer? Well, really and truly all of my life, I loved to read. I loved to write. I loved to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number one. Number two, uh, the gum In my high school career, I'll tell you, I was a freshman, and one of my teachers, a nun, told us all one day to go home and look in the mirror, and as we chewed gum, we would look like a cow chewing cud, and therefore, that was one of the aggravations of our lives, that we should understand we were making ourselves look ridiculous, and also, they had too many pieces of gum that were stuck under the desk. (laughs) So that was something that I just kind of never forgot in my life. 
And then, of course, because I became a teacher, I said, no chewing gum in my life, in the, in the room. And that went on further and further. But anyway, different things have come up in my life. And if, if somehow, uh, besides the fact, by the way, this is a two-part answer, so to speak, mm-hmm. uh, because I had five children, and I would tell stories to them every night, and I made them up, basically. And so uh, there were many that I decided to just write up a little bit but for them, not, not for anybody else. And this was one of the favorites that they liked about the gum. And so I thought, after many years of teaching and going through a retirement and all the other things, um, if I wanted to write something, I wanted to write it that was funny and that would be uh, interesting maybe and have a historical teaching value, plus the fact that maybe people would stop sticking the gum in the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> my children loved that one of that. Well, that story is one of the best they said, but my uh, some of them like the other ones better, but that's all right. <laughs> There you go. Fantastic. You know, following off of that, and I think you've already, again, started to go into it. So thank you very much, making this a very easy segue. Why did you specifically choose this age group, right, and wanting it to be for children? Well, you know, uh, because I guess, and of course this is almost, you know, a repetition, but I suppose because I did tell so many stories to my children they enjoyed them. I loved making them up and telling them. So I thought maybe there would be other people who would enjoy it or their children would enjoy hearing these different stories that I'd made up through the years uh, with my children. <laughs> Absolutely. There you have it. Again, here on the line with Janice Bernard. We're discussing her book, The Gum, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her personal website, JaniceBernard.com. You know, Janice, next question that I'd love to ask, and I really want to get into, and really it's more of a curiosity for myself, right? Okay. (laughs) You talk about this story that, of course, was a favorite to your children growing up, and Not only, A, was the story one of your favorites, but you also wanted to have the education of an earlier time period that a lot of children, of course, have no experience of. So this way they learn from it, and that's all fantastic. And then in addition to learning of a a specific time period, maybe they learn to throw their gum in the trash and not under the desk, right? So a little bit of a, a little bit of an added bonus there for you. Now... What would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon this journey? Well, first of all, uh, my highlight was the fact that I was approached uh, by uh, by Brian Mendez, and I was surprised. I almost hung up on him because I didn't know what he would. Call, was calling for I didn't know the name <laughs> and uh, when he told me they were interested in redoing or re-editing of my book not editing really uh, uh, promoting it and publishing it for the second time mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I I couldn't even believe it was happening because I just thought I was writing the story uh, uh, originally uh, to be happy to be able to do it and for children to enjoy it and for parents to read it to them maybe and and teach a lesson. So the highlight was that it's being promoted and I do hope that somehow, some way, somewhere, uh, it'll be appreciated for what I did uh, do it for. And it was fun, learning, history, and I don't know, just... uh, the way life was when they could be happy with very little except what they had from the earth. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, listen, you know, the book sounds fantastic. And as I started the interview off by saying such a fun educational ride, really for children across the board, whether it's your own children or a great gift for somebody else, 
Guys, this is a fantastic book that you definitely want to be a part of. You surely will not be disappointed. Now, what's even what's even better is, listen, this is not all, okay? That's the book that's available right now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or through her personal website. But guys, be on the lookout and make sure you continue frequently to go back and check her website because Janice is actually in the process of writing another book. Now, it's again, it's still in the process, so it's still in creation. You can't purchase it just yet, but be on the lookout for her second book. Janice, please, I'd love to hear. Tell us a little bit about your second book that you're in the process of writing. Well, my idea, and I started it, it uh, they thought that I would have a city visitor, a cousin uh, from New Orleans, go to the country cousins uh, for a visit and experience all kind of new adventures that uh, were foreign to her. And so they would have a lot of things to learn again, particularly the city girl cousin who was going to learn about uh, all the things that were going on in the country. And uh, there were many, many things that were eye-opening and uh, just a lot of experiences and uh, actions and games and whatever. So that's my uh, thought for the beginning of the book. <laughs> there you go. Listen, write what you know, right? Write what your experience is. That's fantastic, and we're definitely looking forward to it. It sounds like it's just going to be as amazing as this book here. Now, you know, Janice, listen, I, being an artist myself, and, you know, I'm an actor and a filmmaker based here in Los Angeles, so different medium. But, you know, I love having this platform to really reach out to other artists, right, and kind of pay it forward. Now, listen, you've written one book, you've gotten it published, you're in the process of writing another book, you spent such an illustrious career in education, also as an actress, so you have a wealth of knowledge that I'm sure you can provide, specifically geared towards writing. What, what is some advice that you can give a new writer, somebody just starting out? Well, first of all, you have to really love to write. Um, this is serious. Mm -hmm. Then when you have an idea and you think maybe it will work, don't just question it. Put it down on paper and never, never be happy with the first thing you write down because you have to twist it and turn it or rearrange it or start all over. But the idea Absolutely. should never leave your mind if you really want to do this. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, I love that. I love how, listen, guys, you can't get complacent, right? Art is so, there's really, you know, that's the one thing that's always tough about art, right? That's the one thing that's always difficult about art is because there's always more that can be done. There's always a way that you can improve and kind of sculpt your art there. So, you know, fantastic words of, of advice don't be complacent, right? Listen, the first time that you write it down is fantastic because you got it initiated. But at the end of the day, keep working on it. Keep improving it, right? And, de and building and developing. Thank you I, so that's much. My theory. I never I write something down and I look at it and then I come back and I say, oh, I think I better rearrange this, do that. Uh, because you get a better idea after you say it out loud to yourself, mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Janice, thank you so much for this. Guys, listen, what more can be said? Okay? You know what you got to do. All right? We've mentioned this multiple times. Get out there. It makes a great gift for your children. It makes an even better gift for somebody else's children. Take this fun educational ride that Janice has put together for us with your kids. You surely will not be disappointed, especially right now, given the current situation that we're all facing. Listen, we're all spending a lot of time at home, and our kids are as well. So just because that's the case doesn't mean the education has to stop, right? Continue to implement that. Continue to embark upon these journeys with them. So one last time, here on the line with Janice Bernard, we just finished discussing her book the gum available at amazon barnes and noble or through her personal website janicebernard.com janice this has been an absolute delight thank you so much for being a guest with us today on people of distinction well thank you it's been a pleasure 
and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it, and it's been a pleasure talking to you and, and enjoy doing this very much.